guys and welcome back to the Law and Obligations and Contracts series. Nandito tayo ngayon para sa introduction ng extinguishment of obligations. So this is based on the article 1231 to 1304 ng Civil Code of the Philippines. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to alert you on the release of upcoming videos. Also, don't forget to like this video if you find it uh, informative. And kung gusto nyong uh, magsagot and to test yourself, we have our full course on the uh, description below. So merong link po dyan. You just need to click it and sign up. And of course, it is free and you only need an email address to register. Okay? So, ayan. Mag-umpisa na tayo sa extinguishment of obligation. So, bago ang lahat, ito po ay isang introductory video lamang po para sa uh, extinguishment of obligations. So, ang layon po muna natin dito ay para makita yung overview ng ating, uh, ng chapter na ito, which is the extinguishment of obligation. Okay? So, as much as possible, um, gusto, i-explain po natin ang bawat uh, modes, um, as shortly as possible and kung meron man itong mga different types or classifications sasabihin na rin natin dito para magkaroon tayo ng overview okay so let's start uh, ang ating introductory article sa chapter na ito is the article 1231 under 1231 binabanggit niya dito yung mga different modes of extinguishment of obligation yung unang anim na binanggit niya dito which is which is starts from payment or performance and ends by innovation, these are the most common types of or most uh, common modes of extinguishment of obligation. Um, may mga nabanggit din siya dito under 12, Article 1231 pa rin po uh, na other modes of extinguishment such as annulment, rescission, fulfillment of resolutory condition and prescription. Pero hindi po ito ang magiging focus ng ating uh, chapter na ito. Okay? Magpo-focus tayo dun sa six modes of extinguishment of obligation. Okay? And tatandaan nyo, hindi rin po limited sa mga nabanggit lang sa 1231 yung mga modes of extinguishment of obligation. Actually, marami pang uh, different modes. Okay? Lalo na pag mapupunta na tayo dun sa mga other nominate contracts such as the contract of sale, uh, contract of agency, and other contracts. Okay? So, ayan. Um... Okay, so, iisaysay natin yan from numbers 1 to 6. So, unahin muna natin ang payment or performance. Okay? So, payment or performance. Ayan, meron tayong example dito. Pag sinabi natin payment or performance from the word itself, kung meron tayong, let's say, utang in money, okay, so, payment ang tawag doon. Magbabayad tayo ng utang. Uh, once na nagbayad tayo ng utang, malamang lamang extinguish na yung obligation natin. Wala na tayong obligation. Ganun lang po yun kasimple. Pag performance naman, um, ito naman yung term na gagamitin natin if we are referring to, let's say, uh, let's say this example, X-bound himself to repair y car. So, basically, ang gagawin nyo dyan, isa yung obligation to do kasi, di ba? So, that, uh, ang term po dyan ay performance. Ipa-perform nyo yung kanyang obligation. Okay? So, next, what are the special modes of payment? So, there are special modes of payment or performance. So, we have four. Number one, application of payment. Number two, the shown in pago or the English term will be the shown in payment. Number three, session in pago. English term will be payment by session. And number four, tender of payment and consignation. So, isa-isahin natin. Uh, explain natin uh, shortly as possible. So, pag sinabi nating application of payment, ganito yun. Um, for example, ikaw, meron kang utang sa iisang tao lang. Marami kang utang sa kanya. Okay. Uh, pero, nung magbabayad ka na, assuming nag na lahat ng utang mo, okay? Pero, nung magbabayad ka na, kulang ang pambayad mo para mabayaran lahat ng utang. So, ang mangyayari is, kapag magbabayad ka na, dahil total due na silang lahat, pipiliin mo kung anong utang mo ang babayaran mo, okay? So, that's what we call application of payment. Ia-apply mo. Saan mo ia-apply? Sa, sa, sa ang utang mo? Aling utang mo? Ang a mag a mo yung nung binabayad mo, okay? So, that's number one. Number two, the shonen pago. Pag sinabi natin the shonen pago, this is a mode of payment wherein, uh, instead of paying money, we will pay in kind. Pag sinabi natin in kind, you will use non-cash assets. So, for example, meron kang utang na 10,000 sa isang creditor. Uh, napag-usapan yung dalawa ng creditor, 
na instead of paying 10,000, what if um, ibigay mo na lang yung cellphone mo sa kanya? So, kapag nagpag-usapan nyo na ganun na nga, okay, so nagkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na the Shonen Pago, isang special mode of payment. Um, instead of paying in cash, you pay in kind. Yung number 3, halos pares lang siya. Um, you pay with your properties, pero uh, compared sa number 2, medyo mas much larger scale yung number 3 kasi it involves all your properties. Okay? Pero, syempre, pagdating ng next video, i, uh, tawag dito, i-explain natin yan in detail. Okay? So, for now, uh, kailangan mo lang nat muna natin mag is yung uh, concept ng bawat uh, terms. Okay? So, next, we have tender of payment and consignation. So, basically, itong number 4, we have two Okay, two processes, tender of payment as consignation. Uh, unay mo natin yung tender of payment. When we say tender of payment, that is the act of paying something using a legal tender. Ibig sabihin, kapag ang ginagamit mo na pambayad ay isang legal tender, pwede mo yung ma-enforce. So, ano nga ba ang legal tender dito sa Philippines? Siyempre, yun yung mga, yung mga notes na in ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, such as our uh, peso bills, di ba? Yung 20 pesos. 50 pesos, 100 pesos, 200, 500, 1,000. So, yun yung mga uh, denominations. And we have the bills and coins then. We have the centavos, mga uh, piso, limang piso, sampung piso. Okay, so yung mga yun. Yun yung mga legal tender. Pero uh, may mga certain limits yung mga yun, which is, i-discuss na lang natin on the next video. Okay, and when you say consignation, this is the act of uh, depositing uh, de de depositing your debt, okay, in the court. So, ang nangyayari kasi, bakit mo kailangan i-deposit yung utang mo? Kasi, it's either hindi possible na maibigay mo yung bayad sa creditor. It's either hindi mo mahanap si creditor or hindi mo kilala kung sino yung creditor mo. So, possible yun actually. And, yun nga. Ang, syempre, ang, the only option mo doon is yun nga. I-deposit siya sa court at yung creditor Doon niya nalang kukunin sa korte, okay? So, ayan, yun yung number 4. Pero marami pang rules dyan sa number 4. I-explain na lang natin on the next video, okay? Next, we have number 2, or the second mode of extinguishment of obligation is the loss of the thing. Pag sinabi na natin loss of the thing, very straightforward lang siya. Napag-aralan na natin siya on the, on the previous, uh, mga previous videos. So, specifically sa nature and effects. Um, loss of the thing refers to obligations wherein uh, ang obligation mo ay to give a specific thing at kapag nawala yan via 7. So, ang mangyayari doon is may extinguish yung obligation mo. Okay? Ganun lang yung kasimple. Huwag nyo na masyadong pakomplikaduhin. Yun lang yun. Okay? Next, condonation. Under condonation, actually, we have the root, root word donate. Okay? Donate. Donation. Okay? So, basically, ang mangyayari dito is ano, um, si creditor uh, hindi niya na i-enforce yung obligation mo. Okay? Ibig sabihin, when waive niya na yung right niya to enforce uh, yung uh, obligation. So, for example, X is indebted to Y for 500,000 payable December 31 next year. So, assuming hindi pa dumarating yung December 31 next year, and ang nangyari, sabi ni Y, o X, wag mo na yung bayaran yung utang mo. So, ang nangyari is, extinguish na yung Obligation X, which is to pay 500,000. Ganun lang yung kasimple. Pero may mga certain provisions na pag-aaralan natin on the next video. Okay? So, next we have the fourth mode of extinguishment of obligation. We have the confusion. When we say confusion, nagkakaroon literally ng confusion dahil uh, the characteristic of a creditor and the characteristic of a debtor resides in one person only. So, in this case, ito yung example natin. Uh, P loan to M, 500,000. So, nagpautang si P kay M ng 100, uh, 500,000 resulting to M issuing a promissory note payable to P. Okay? So, nagbigay siya ng promissory note kay P. And then, si P, anong ginawa niya doon sa promissory note? Binenta niya kay A. Si A, binenta niya kay B. Si B, binenta niya kay C. And then, si C, binenta niya pabalik kay M. So, basically, si M, siya yung... Uh, debtor dun sa promissory note na yun. At the same time, siya na ang may hawak ng promissory note na yun. So, anong nangyayari? Siya na ang 
creditor ng kanyang sarili. Okay, so in that, in that case, nagkaroon na lang tayo ng tinatawag na confusion or merger of rights. Okay, yun yung, mga, yun yung other term natin, confusion or merger of rights. So in that case, yung obligation na M, syempre, it's basically extinguished kasi ganun din lang, babayaran niya yung sarili niya. May ganun ba? Na, syempre, wala. Practically, wala. Okay? So, next, we have the fifth, uh, fifth mode of extinguishment of obligation. We have the compensation. Pag sinabi natin compensation, uh, both parties are creditor and debtor of each other. So, for example, X is indebted to Y for 100,000. Also, Y is indebted to X for 100,000. So, in this case, X and Y no longer have a debt or X and Y's obligations are no longer existing. It's, in, it's, it's in, extinguished via compensation. Okay? Alangan naman na babayaran nila ang isang isa for 100,000. Siyempre, hindi. Okay? Um, pero there are, ano, there are, actually, there are different kinds of compensation. At yung na-illustrate natin dito is actually the number one, legal compensation. Uh, legal compensation happens automatically without uh, without the need of consent from either of the parties. So, that is the legal compensation. However, in number two, conventional compensation, kailangan ng consent ng both parties para mag-take effect po siya. So, pagdating natin ng next video, magbibigay tayo ng mga different examples dyan. Number three naman, pag number three, facultative, this is a type of compensation wherein only one party have the ability to enforce compensation. Okay, meaning, uh, kailangan ng consent ng isang party which is which has the right to enforce compensation. Okay? Kung hindi nyo masyadong nagets, huwag kayo magalala pagdating ng next video, in detail po natin siyang illustrate. Okay? And lastly, uh, we have the judicial compensation. In judicial compensation, si court ang magde-decide kung ano ang magiging ano, effect ng compensation sa kanilang mga obligations. Okay? So, ayun. Yun yung panglima. And down to the last, okay, down to the last mode of extinguishment of obligation, we have the novation. So, novation. Ano bang nangyayari sa novation? Actually, there is a change. Okay? Nagkakaroon ng change of obligations. So, ang nangyayari is, yung old obligation, may extinguish yun. And then, magkakaroon ng new obligation. So, in this case, let, uh, let's uh, examine this example. X in, is indebted to Y for 100,000. X and Y agreed that instead of 100,000, X will be giving his car instead as payment. Okay. So, in this case, ang mangyayari is, may utang siya ng 100,000, pero napag-usapan nila, instead of 100,000, yung car na lang ni X ang ipambabayad niya. Okay. So, in this case, actually, uh, ang nangyari dito is, na-extinguish yung uh, obligation ni X which is to uh, give 100,000 pero nagkaroon siya ng bagong obligation which is to give uh, his car. Okay, so uh, actually nagkaroon ng extinguishment dito. Okay, pero may nag-arise na bagong obligation. Okay, sir, pares lang ba siya sa dasyon in pago? Actually may pagkakaiba yan. So explain natin yan on the next video. Okay, so next what are the different kinds of novation? So we have um Two in this case, pero actually we have three. Okay, we have number three, the mixed novation. Okay, okay, so explain natin yan. So, ano ba yung real novation? Pag real novation, nagkakaroon ng change of prestation. Sa number two, personal novation, nagkakaroon ng change of subject. It's either the debtor or the creditor. However, in mix, we have change of both. Okay? Change of both the, let's say, prestation and the uh, one of the subject, di ba? Okay? So, diving deeper into personal innovation, we have two kinds ulit. So, we have substitution for the change of debtor at subrogation naman ang tawag sa change of creditor. Again, inside change of debtor, we have two expromission and delegation. So, ang pagkakaiba lang ng expromission and delegation is kung sino yung nag-initiate ng substitution. Kapag expromission, ang nag-initiate ng substitution ay yung third person which will eventually become the new debtor. However, in delegation, ang nag-initiate ng substitution ay yung original debtor. Okay? 
So, by the next video, we will tackle in detail itong mga uh, na-discuss natin for now, di ba? So, for now, overview pa lang, okay? So, that's it for our introduction to the different modes of extinguishment of obligation. So, please don't forget to subscribe and also like this video if nakatulong. And papaalala ko lang kung gusto nyo mag-sign up sa ating full course. So, may mga questions and answers din tayo doon. It's free. Just click the link on the description and mapupunta na kayo doon sa uh, specific web page na yon Okay? So, coming up next, we have the Extinguishment of Obligations Part 1.